Hi, this is Sylvie's technique vlog, and uh, I'm talking about Karahat's push in the clinch, which um, is not actually as unique to Karahat as I originally thought, uh, but it is less common than the pull that everyone seems to be taught. So in the, the pull in the clinch, you see a lot of this, and what Karahat is doing and what the push is is the exact same hand position, but instead of pulling, you're pushing like this, and it's mostly used for off-balancing. And it's really, really good because people are anticipating that pull. They've done that before. They know what that feel is, and they're trying to pull. So when they start to lean in a direction, you can off-balance them further and go this way. And you can do it from both inside or outside position. So it's actually a really beneficial uh, thing to be doing. So you want to create a vector point with your elbow. And it's kind of like when you're arm wrestling. You keep it like this, and it comes from your shoulder. And then same thing as when you're pulling, how you pull from your leg this way. You want to do the exact same motion with the push. So you're going to be going from your hip down this way and finish with a knee. When you're using the push on the side of the neck rather than the pull, it's going to have a lot more to do with timing. So when you're doing the pull, you can use a lot more muscle. So you're kind of like using your strength to pull people to the side. But for the push, you can use their body movements and timing with that in order to use a lot less of your own strength and kind of continue them on in the direction that they're already going. So you don't want to be in this double plumb position. Um, that's not a position you find yourself in in Thailand or against people who know how to clinch very often at all, even though that's something that's taught in gyms a lot as like the only position you're trying to get to. Instead, what you're going to want to try to do is get in a frame. So you might have one hand on the neck and the other one is controlling the arms. And you can do that from either side. It kind of just depends on which your dominant hand is and which you're comfortable with, but being ambidextrous in the clinch is pretty important because that's a time when you kind of square up more than any other time in a fight. So from this kind of position, when you have your hand on the neck, the same way that people are always going to want to be pulling this way, you just wait for the right moment when someone is trying to swim to the inside. See how my body is already leaning this way? And you would just push to continue in that direction. So if I show this in shadow, you keep your elbow against the opponent and you have this part on their neck. And as they start to lean to try to swim in on this side, you step with your hip and get out of the way. And so I'm actually going to be pulling them into the space that I'm going to be um, evacuating at the same time. So you go from here to there. And you just use a bent arm and pull down. And then you want to throw that knee. Don't forget the knee, that's an important part. So as your opponent's body is contorting, as they're trying to swim in, you just kind of invite them to keep going in that same direction that they're already going. Some mistakes that you might make when you first start trying this, one is gripping the neck, which you don't have to do at all. One, you have gloves on, so you can't really do it. But two, it's very different from the pull, which you do need a grip for. You're not looking for a grip when you're pushing, which is maybe why Karahat is so good at this. You're actually using your forearm, so your hand doesn't matter. You just kind of keep it up, and you want to be taking contact here on your forearm and pushing, again, with like a bent arm like this as you're moving your opponent rather than trying to find a grip position. Don't waste your time trying to find grip. Let them try to find grip, and you keep off-balancing them. Another thing is being too far away. In the same way that you can't pull someone like this, because you're not going to have any strength as you go like this, you need to stay much closer when you're doing this. So you don't want to stay stagnant and push the side of the head like this, because you're not really going to have any power. You can off balance a little bit, but that's not really the point. You want to stay close and then get to the side of your opponent. So you're almost moving into their like blind spot. So if you picture an opponent, right in front of me, their front foot is going to be here. I'm going to step just outside their front foot if I'm pushing this way and pull this around. This is what's generating the power, but I need to stay really close to the body. I don't want to be coming out like this. There's no power in that and you're not going to move anybody. <laughs> so you want to stay really close. Again, keep the arm bent as much as you can. Make contact with your forearm and come around like this. The more you can protect your neck at the same time, the better. So the context for this is really cool and Karahat is really, really good at it. 
he can do it from inside position, which means when I'm like this, the opponent has inside position if they're in here, they have outside position if they're here. So if their arm is here and I'm inside, it's easy to go like this because you have a pretty good position. But if I have outside position, which is not the dominant position in most cases, if I'm outside someone's arm, if I choose the right moment when they're trying to swim in, when they're not fully in their strength position or while they're trying to knee, when you come up for a knee, your power is down here, your power is not up here, and you're on one leg. So if you time it right from the outside position, you can take a non-dominant position and make it a very dominant moment, pull someone to the side, push them rather. So as someone is trying to knee on this side, so they're standing here, you just go this way. You, you generally want to be pushing someone towards their standing leg because they can't catch themselves. If I'm on this leg and you try to push me towards this one, I can kind of catch myself. It's like a kickstand. So in general, you want to go towards someone's standing leg, but you just have to keep doing this to feel, you can feel intuitively which way you want to be pushing people. And you're practicing this in shadow first so that you understand how the footwork and keeping everything kind of tight in this motion goes first. And then you can start introducing it into your actual clinch practice and feel where your opponents are moving and your clinch partners as they start to swim in. And you feel this body position, <laughs> you just kind of spin someone out. So just, again, keep your elbows like you're doing an arm wrestling contest and all the power is coming from your hip moving. So don't try to like muscle your way this way. Just vacate the premises basically and let them come into that empty spot and throw the knee.